I know you took a lot of heat for your comments on the call uh, initially on Microsoft's guidance, but to me, that was a very good thing. Like if you're not getting heat, then you're not triggering people and, and or their thoughts and most importantly, their positioning. But is there, is, is there any possible way that GDP goes to zero and you have four straight quarters of quad four and Microsoft somehow goes off on their own stability path? Here's my thought. If Microsoft is going to be totally unscathed and everything's going to be fine, um, then what everyone should do is literally lever up and go buy the rest of SaaS and not Microsoft because they aren't down, the stock's not down that much. Um, they haven't shown the river card. Other people have literally shown river cards, experienced river cards, had hard crashes, had said, you know, things slowing, et cetera. So you go by those because if things are actually going to be okay, then um, they're going to be okay. And if, and then there is a theory that Microsoft's going to be fine. And everybody else is going to suck. And that's just like, wow, it's literally impossible. I mean, it's like literally, it's literally impossible. Just look at the size of Microsoft relative to the industry. Look at the industry. Look what's happened to the industry. Um, no, I mean, you're, that would assume that right now in this moment, they're gaining market share across every single product line, perfectly timed market share gains that they haven't had in, in synced up and all perfect that will stretch out over the next seven quarters and will leave them completely secularly unscathed. No, impossible. I appreciate that answer. Cause I, cause you know, there, we had a quick back and forth and then I said, I said, your assumption would also have to be like no cyclicality to major cyclicality to Microsoft's revenues or earnings would imply that um, they enter the first recession of the di digital transformation and or um, whatever the hell you want to call it unscathed. Right. And he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that like they're, they're going to be affected. Uh, so I was like, okay. It's easy to point to the secular positives of Microsoft today. That's that's wonderful. But as you have pointed out a billion times, it's when the cycle goes the wrong direction that people suddenly see the secular boo-boos. And those things are hard to see when everything secular and cyclical are going the right direction. You ignore all the oh the little things, oh, those are you know, those are noise, those are the wall of worry. But like when the cycle goes out suddenly that wall of worry is like, ooh, I don't know, maybe they're not going to win in this area. Maybe that area they're actually losing. Maybe this area there, there actually is like a big, huge liability for them. That's, I think that's what's going to happen with Microsoft cyclically. One of the biggest things, if you want to survive and, and do well across cycles, is to be consistent with your process. Tweak your process, you know, when you find opportunities to evolve it. But, you know, so what you just said about Microsoft is a brilliant comment, um, you know, you don't see secular problems till you see cyclical slowdown. Like everybody should write that down and remember that for the rest of the time that they're, you know, blessed to be playing this game. I, I encourage everybody to battle test your process. Don't get whipped around every day by talking points or the color on the screen or the color of the futures. If you want to really do this, like for a long time, you have to have a process that's objective, data driven, and it understands the difference between cyclical and secular. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.